Discord. Sorry if you're watching a replay of this. We just got done with one minute of those ankle rockers, which was standing on your toes and then rolling back to your heels. Now we're going one minute of squats. And now we're going to roll into one minute with a glute bridge hold. So go ahead and drop down, drive that butt up in the air, and we're literally just going to try to hold this for one minute straight. There you go. Got everybody down, everybody holding. About 30 seconds left when we're done with this, we're gonna stay on the ground and go into hollow snaps. Keep holding, keep holding. Everybody's looking good. About 10 seconds left. So go ahead and stick those arms out long, legs out long. You'll see Stephanie, she's gonna snap up, hold for about a second, and then go back down to lying down. So let's get right into it. Snap up into that hollowed out position, and right down flat. When you do this, try to keep, if you can, let's keep those feet. Don't let them come all the way up. Should just come up about six to 12 inches off the ground. So you point your toes, squeeze your feet together, squeeze those quads real tight. Just think about the whole front side of your body. Everything is contracted. Tips of your fingers all the way down to the tips of your toes. About 15 seconds left, and then we're going to get up and go into some kettlebell or dumbbell toe taps after this. All right, let's go ahead and hop up. You got a dumbbell or a kettlebell, you can pull that out and use it. We're just gonna circle around it a little bit or stay in one place. Just start tapping with the toes. If you can, let's tap on the top. You gotta get your knees up a little bit higher, not just tapping the front of it or kicking it. Mm, this hand sanitizer smells good. It's like oranges. Shows you how long it's been since I've used that hand sanitizer. <laughs> it smells like, um, or lemons, that's what it smells like. Citrus. There you go. Let's get light on the feet. Start hopping on the toes. Get it moving. Get warmed up. All right, next 20 seconds, let's just go high knees in place. Knees up, pumping those arms. Come on, Annie. Don't worry about that fly. Just, I thought you were going up to sneeze into your elbow. I was going to tell Laura to run. All right, everybody, take a break. Should be pretty warm, ready to go. If you need a second, you can, uh, we need everybody to have for this. So we've got different options on this. Ideally, if you have a jump rope and a kettlebell or dumbbell and a box, something to step up on, but I'll give you other options if you don't have that as well. So we're gonna go through this for, let me get uh, the correct thing on my personal screen over here. We're gonna go through this for 12 minutes and it's three movements as many times as you can get through it. And I'm gonna, uh, Stephanie's gonna demonstrate these the way they're written on the screen. But then when we're actually going through the workout, she is going to have a modification that she's gonna be using while she goes through it. And I'll show you that so that you do have options to that as well. Give me just a second, I'm trying to, make this text a little bit smaller on my screen so it doesn't take up so much of it. That's a little bit better. So 12 minutes, first movement uh, you got, if you got a jump rope or we can do penguin hops and I'll also show you the modification for this that Stephanie's gonna be doing. So if you got a jump rope, you're gonna go 50 single unders, just where that rope goes around one time. You also got penguin hops. Remember where you can lightly tap those thighs every time you jump. It's always more of a challenge if you jump higher and do a double tap every time you're up. If the jumping does not work for you, uh, what you're gonna do is pick up a kettlebell or a dumbbell and we're gonna do those halo squats. So she'll drop down in a squat 
come up, go, you can, and she'll stand all the way up, go around the head, and then come back down, just like we would do with that plate. Right there, then back down to that squat, come up, right around the head, back down. So she's going to do that right there without hitting herself in the head. Drop down deep. So almost like she's going to try to touch the ground with the kettlebell every time she drops. So she's doing, we would usually do these with a plate. Those are those pl uh, halo plate squats we usually do. Um, Stephanie is going to do 25 of those instead of doing 50 single unders. So again, if you don't want to do the bouncing, right, if that doesn't work for you, get uh, something you can hold on to, whether it's a plate, dumbbell, whatever it might be. Um, and then you're going to do those halo plate squats. And if you'd rather just do the squats and you don't have a weight to do that halo with, you can do 25 speed squats on that. So that's something that will keep you from having to bounce up and down. Um, so when you're done with that, then you should have a heavier kettlebell or make sure you have that dumbbell ready. And we're going into swings. So on your swings, we're going to go 30 reps. So that is a long set. Remember, if you've got a dumbbell, you can hold that dumbbell vertically by the head of the dumbbell. And all the other rules still apply. So you want to swing it with it hanging low, just like a kettlebell would be. And then you keep it real tight to that groin as you drive those hips back. So you got 50 single unders or penguin hops, 30 kettlebell swings, and then you're going into box step ups for 10 reps each side. And the challenge is to hold that weight in the goblet position because that's going to make it harder to breathe and make your heart rate go up a little bit higher. So she's going to go 10 straight on each side, driving through that heel. And then she'd switch legs and go 10 on the other side. If you get really fatigued with that kettlebell out in front, just bring it around and let it hang on your back. That's how I usually end up doing it if I got a real heavy one and allows me to breathe a little bit more effectively. Um, if you don't have something you can swing, so let's go back to that and give you some body weight options on that. We're going to do those full body extensions. So this will be 30 full body extensions where she swings her arms back, drops into a deep squat, and explodes up all the way onto her toes. If you don't have a box to step up on, you would hold that kettlebell up in the goblet position again and just go into uh, forward stepping lunges. So instead of step back, she's just going to step forward again, driving through that heel and you would go 10 each leg on that. So you've got uh, options there, lots of different options, but the original is the single unders for 50 kettlebell swings for 30 step ups for 10 each leg. Again, if you're just modifying on that one that you're hopping up and down on, we're doing those halo squats for 25 reps on that. So that would be 25, then 30, then 10 each leg. All right, 12 minutes. I'm going to get it going on the clock. Looks like everybody's ready. If you need another modification, let me know. Otherwise, 12 minutes. we got some Flow Rider playing here. Hopefully, you got some good music. Give you about five seconds. Get ready. About to get a step team going. All right, go. Let's get it going. We're going to push the pace. So if you're jumping, it's 50 reps, 50 reps. Count it out. Oh, I like the jump rope arms, EA. Always got to be different. Doesn't want to be a penguin. Looking good, everybody. 50 of those, and then you're into your 30 dumbbell or kettlebell swings. Three, oh, 30, start 30 swings. Get it going, Laura. There you go. Remember, every time we swing, that kettlebell or dumbbell is going to come up right about chest height. Now, when you swing, so remember, this is a hip-dominant movement, so we don't bend the knees too much. We don't want to squat our swing. Oh, there you go, McGee. Shoot that butt back just like we were practicing on those deadlifts yesterday. Got some good-looking swings in this group. Should feel a big stretch in the hamstring every time that butt shoots back on the swing. Oh, I like the bucket you got out there, Vicky. I can tell what that bucket's for. A baseball family. All right, 30 swings, and then you're into 10 step ups each leg or 10 stepping forward lunges with the weight in the goblet position. 10 each leg. Let's go. Dolly, I feel like lunges would probably be more effective than that. Come on now. Or either step up on the couch. That's a baby step. Get out of here. Come on. I just wanted to be like, oh, that's cute. There you go. Look at that. Look how much deeper you can get on those lunges. You love that. Vicky, just take your – you're doing great. Just take your time on that bucket. That's kind of a small base of support. 
be a, be careful. Christy Meadows, you got a that's pretty good height right there, that ottoman. That works. Dean, good job on the lunges, man. I like how you're getting that knee right down to the floor. Good work, buddy. Good wide stance, too. That's it. So remember, if we're doing step ups, you want to go all the way to a straight leg with a leg that's stepping up before you bring the opposite leg up behind it. Boom, there it was right there. That was perfect. That way we get those glutes and quads fully engaged at the top of that step up. So remember, if you need that model, if you want to do something where you're not hopping, you're not bouncing around, Stephanie's got that going right now. Otherwise, you are on those penguin hops. Penguin hops are single unders for 50 reps. She's doing 25 on these halo squats. Good work, folks. Good work. Keep grinding. Keep grinding. You're about just past three minutes in. You know, everybody's into that second round. Good stuff. Good stuff. Keep it up. Get it, Dolly. Now you got to do that every single time. I'm excited about it. I know you are. Woo. That's it, folks. That's it. So remember on those swings, it's a real aggressive pop with the hips. Every time your butt comes forward, pop. Almost like you were going to jump, but our feet don't come off the ground at all. Boom. Ponytail shakes right at the top. Right there. There you go. Pop. It's an aggressive movement. It, folks. That's it. Keep it up. You got it. Ten each leg on the step ups of the lunges. Good work, Will. You got it, buddy. You got that. Keep rocking. Keep pushing. Y'all are grinding on this, grinding on this. I think those step-ups are what can be sneaky, like with your heart rate. You wouldn't necessarily think stepping up would get your heart rate up that much, but I guess if you consider running upstairs, this is easily as hard as that. Stephanie's killing it. She's in the yellow with her my zone. Hopefully most of y'all are giving that kind of effort that gets you up into that yellow if you got a belt on. We do those swings. Let's try to get that dumbbell or kettlebell all the way up to chest height. There we go. That's it. Way to pop those hips. Y'all are killing it. Keep grinding. Keep grinding. You got this. Everybody's looking energetic today. Just about at that halfway point. We've been doing a lot of shorter Metcons later, uh, lately. This 12 minutes might be seem like a long one so right at that's just about a six minutes 15 seconds left we got this now we got this we got this let's go got jump rope swings step ups super simple always the most effective when it's simple killing it, killing it killing it killing it I like the kettlebell on the back, Patty. I'm calling that the Joe position. I made that up. That's what we're telling people. Because I'm lazy and I didn't want to hold my heavy kettlebell in the goblet position. <laughs> Rosemary swings looking good. I see that old white kettlebell. I hadn't seen that thing in forever. It's one of the original bells from like Russia, we're going to say. Right, five minutes left. 
Five minutes left. Let's keep going. Everybody's looking smooth. Remember, if we're doing penguin hops, you don't have to take the arms real far away from your legs. You just keep them real close and just tap. That's it, folks. I love the pace. Let's keep it going. Keep it going. Dolly, I feel like we could step up on uh, one of your coffee table, coffee table over there. Just throwing that idea out. Just throwing it out there. You can push it up against the couch. You can step up on the stability ball. Put the pink step on the stability ball. Yeah. Killing it, folks. Killing it. Getting on the tail end of this thing. We're in the final third. So we're less than four minutes left. Should be starting to sweat. That's it. That's it. Keep pushing. Keep going. Keep moving. You got this. Come on now. There you go. As soon as you get done with those swings, right into step ups or lunges. It worked, Patty. That's the hardest part is getting that thing down. After. <laughs> All right, three minutes. Three minutes. Let's keep that pace that you can maintain for three minutes. There you go, McGee. That swing's looking better and better every time. Keep it up. You're doing a good job shoving those hips back. That's it. Explode when you come up. Snap the hips. Think it's like a whip. Snap. Snap. There you go. Ooh, we got it. We got it. Let's keep grinding. Not too much time left now. Last two and a half minutes. Got it, Dolly. Dolly, feel free to, you know, grab that kettlebell on the floor right there beside you. Just going to give you the opportunity. Come on, Holland. Let's get it. Good swings. Let's pop those hips. Yeah, Dean. Got it, dude. Lunge is looking solid, man. All right. We are past two minutes. Past two minutes. Let's keep pushing. Keep pushing. Come on now. Got some red on the screen here. Oh, she's had it up there twice already. That whole line is yellow and red. <laughs> the whole line. I'm going to die on this today. You got it. I know that goblet position gets tough when those step ups. I know it gets tough. So we got about a minute left. I'm going to challenge everybody to keep moving. You guys have killed this today in terms of your pace. Nobody's really stopped to rest like at all. It's, if, it, if so, it's been really quick. So. I appreciate that pace. Let's keep it going for this last minute. And if you can get outside of your head a little bit and pick it up a little bit harder, let's pick it up a little bit harder just for this last uh, 50 seconds right here. You're going to get a full two-minute break coming up in less than a minute. Grind it out. Grind it out. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Keep it up. Appreciate that effort. All right, we're less than 30 seconds now. About to hit 20. Come on now. Come on, keep going. Stephanie, I'd go like five each leg. Unless you're alternating, just, just roll right through it. Because we got 10 seconds now. Come on, keep going. Whatever you're doing, just keep at it. Three seconds, so keep going. 
All right, done. Good job. Catch your breath. Get some water. It's good stuff. Look, Stephanie's hair hanging down, ready to go. So I'm talking about. That was indeed what Silas called it on here is Metcon. He called it a 12-minute gasser. I think most of y'all look like you're gassed. I was just have a seat, get some water. We'll start explaining the next part here in about a minute. We'll let Stephanie catch her breath. I'm going to edit this slide as well so it does not take up so much space. Mm. Now, y'all will be on the. Ground for this. <laughs> all right we'll get stephanie to demonstrate this next part for you i just spilled some of my coffee luckily i had a towel nearby i was prepared because i spill my coffee often put that out of the way all right so this is called please sir can i have some core Silas is getting creative, getting fancy here. Um, so what we got here is a 10-minute AMRAP with technically three movements. And we want you to get through this five times within 10 minutes. But you got to go as fast as you can. If you get done before the 10 minutes, then you get rewarded with holding a plank until that 10-minute period is up. Whether you want to hold tall onto your hands or you want to uh, hold onto your elbows. So the way this works, the first part is 10 V-ups, but between every V-up, you remember you're holding that hollow out, hollowed position, you gotta do 10 flutter kicks. So Stephanie's gonna demonstrate for you, she is crazy excited about this. V-up, something like, something like a V-up right there. <laughs> and then 10 flutter, just five each leg. And then arms go back. She's going to come up and then hold down 10 flutter kicks each leg. This is going to be awesome. So excited today. Look, she's already making a face, too. I'm going to die on this. You, you, you last longer on this stuff than I do. All right, so that's what it looks like. Ten, so you V up and then go into the hollow. If you have to lay your shoulders down on that, you can. But you go into that hollow and go 10 flutter kicks. And then you gotta go into a single leg pike to plank. So just a tall plank with one leg up, and then you're gonna sink back right there. So that's actually 10 each side. So just make sure as you come down into that tall plank, you don't let your low back sink down. So you should feel a big stretch. You could even take that, that leg that's in the air and like stick it up high. If you wanna be real yoga-ish, you could get into it that way. But 10 each side, and then you're flipping back over going right into those V-ups. So if we have any, um, do me a favor, lay on your back real quick. Bring your uh, knees up in the air, feet up in the air with your knees bent. So if we've got any issues with the flutter kicks, what I want you to do is get in the, you'll go into the position that Stephanie is in right now. And she's just going to alternate lightly touching her toes to the ground and coming up right there. So this is a variation of something called a dead bug. And the main goal with this is to actually squeeze tight through that core and keep your back neutral as you go through that movement. So that would be, that's it right there. Um, you can always put your arms up in the air, lift your shoulder blades up on that if you want to, um, just to make it a little bit harder. But you could do five of those each leg instead of flutter kicks if we have any issues with the flutter kicks on that. Is that good? Cool. Is it normal for new shoes with New type of inserts to make, make your feet ache or foot muscles sore in different spots or am I just really out of shape all of a sudden? Um, I think that's absolutely normal. I would say with a lot of the hopping 
and things we're doing like with the skaters and when we get into like the agility ladders and stuff that really works your feet very very hard and we have to stay on our toes so that the musculature gets fatigued too um, unless you are a professional sprinter are you wearing running shoes running shoes okay all right so we'll get everybody ready we're gonna go 10 minutes on the clock yeah inserts sometimes can be kind of stiff too i don't know how what you got but all right so you got 10 v-ups remember every, between every one is 10 flutter kicks and i gave you that modification for that on a dead bug and then you got that single leg pike to plank let's go so this is gonna be tough on your abs it might not shoot your heart rate up way in the ceiling but it will be tough on your abs. I'm going to challenge you to keep the shoulder blades up for every set of 10 on the flutter kicks. And I'm going to grab some wipes, clean up the coffee real quick. Remember on those V-ups and flutter kicks, we're always trying to start from a hollow hold. I know you get tired and you want to lay all the way down flat. Just try to get that back down against the ground every time before you go up into that V-up. Because going from that arched back into a rounded back is what actually over time damages the discs in your spine if we do it too much. And it might not hurt today, it might not hurt tomorrow, but it might in a few years might next year it might in a month just depends on the person and their spine's tolerance so single leg pike to plank you're just going to leave that leg out behind you and just go to a tall plank and then shift your weight sit that butt way up in the air 10 each side on that so if you watch stephanie here she's just got one leg on the ground she's not moving that leg in the air you can if you want to um, but she's getting those hips real high every time she comes back. I think I got the coffee up. Ten each leg. Remember, our goal is to get through this five times within this ten minutes. And if you happen to finish early, we're going to rock out with a low plank. Keep it up, keep it up, keep rolling, keep digging. Just keep a pace you can maintain. I know those shoulders are gonna start burning on this. Looking solid, folks, looking solid. Keep it up. Ten flutter kicks every rep. Yeah, and on those flutter kicks, I'm gonna challenge you on that. Don't let your legs get too high up in the air. Try to keep them down there. Think, remember, we used to all PE class do those six inch leg holds, something close to that, but not quite as low, especially if it gives you any pressure on your back. Come on, we got it, we got it. Remember on the V-ups, if we've got any issues with those on your back, uh, we can always just bring the legs up straight and do a light toe touch on those. And if we're, yeah, there you go, just reach up and touch your toes and then let your shoulder blades go back down if you need to. I would say on that one, just rock out like, since the toe touches are such a small movement, I'd go ahead and just go 10 toe touches and then do like 20 each leg on that yeah, just go straight through them and then go like 20 each leg on that uh, dead bug. Falling off the desk here. 
So we're about five minutes in. Everybody should be getting close to that like third set, I believe. Is that where you're at, Stephanie? You're finishing two? Cool. It looks so much brighter at y'all's house than it does here. Everybody's house. Must be a camera thing. That's a good one, Dolly. Do it with one leg. <laughs> Number on via, uh, excuse me, flutter kicks. You want to keep those knees locked. <coughs> that gum clears out my sinuses. Good work, McGee. That looks solid. Flutter kicks come from the hips, not from the knees. So we don't want to see you kicking your legs from the knees on those. You got to squeeze those quads tight. It's just a tiny little movement, like real tiny little kick. It doesn't have to be very big either. A solid Christy Meadows. That's what we're talking about. She's got a flow going, cruising on that. Digging the arm movement on the V-ups, coming out and around and reaching. Got it, Rosemary. That's it. You got it. Come on. Perfect. Perfect. Woo! Got that, SW. S-dub. That's kind of cool. We can call it S-dub. So, Laura, um, let's get you in a – just get into a tall plank real quick. So, your hands are not under your shoulders. So, yeah, start with your hands directly under your shoulders. That's where we want to start. Now, keep two legs on the ground and just shift back into that uh, pike up. Way back. There you go. And then come back to flat. So, now just lift one leg off the ground and do that same thing. There you go. Now you're getting a little bit more movement. There you go. You can do it with two legs. That's fine. You can just go 20 reps. There you go. That's, that was the best tall plank you just had right there. You were solid on that one. We're just trying to a pike back like as high as you can possibly get those hips. There we go. Should almost – you can do that. Yeah, that's fine. I think that makes it flow if you put that leg up that high. There you go. So you do that and then come down flat into that tall plank. So right there, bring the leg down, come down, then back up, then back down, then right back up. So that's how that would end it. That's like three reps, which you just went through right there. <clears throat> just trying to get a little bit more movement through those shoulders. Everybody's looking good, looking good. We got about two minutes, 20 seconds left. I think trying to get five sets of this is probably going to keep you going the whole time. There we go. You got it. You got it. Keep it up. Come on now. Beautiful, beautiful. Just keep rolling, keep rolling. Got it, Annie. <laughs> Get up. Get up, Annie. You guys should play catch with something every time you come up on a V-up. Since you're both there. Got that, Christy. Come on now. Come on now. That's solid, solid. Rocking those abs. Yeah, I can see your new shoes now. <laughs> Got that, Rosemary. Come on, Hilt to Vital.
Give me some real flutter kicks. Holland, come on. There you go. Boom. And then you get to do them again. That's it. That's it. Hey, 18 seconds. Keep going. Come on. You made it through. You made it through. Just keep moving. All right, wrist. Oh, McGee, you got there. I saw that. You hit the plank. One second left. All right, grab some water real quick if you need it. And we're going to roll into this last part, which is just mobility work. Um, but we've got some purpose behind it and some specific movements we're going to go through. And each uh, exercise is going to last 45 seconds, and we'll give you 15 seconds to switch in between. And then we're going to go into a couch stretch. Let me get my clock set. All right, here's what we got for you. So we're going to go through three movements. Um, each one's 45 seconds long. First one is an alt the alternating Spider-Man steps with just the legs. So just bring your leg up, driving that knee out. And I like how Stephanie kind of drove her elbow down towards the floor. That's a great way to add a stretch to your upper back. So we're going to go 45 seconds of those. Then you'll get to lay on your back. We're going to go to a glute bridge march. So this is where you keep your hips in the air the entire 45 seconds. And your goal is to alternate your legs without letting your hips drop at all. Stephanie's doing a very good job demonstrating that right there. It's it tough the more tired you get. Then we're going to flip over. Go into a down dog to cobra. So this would be just like that plank to pike up, but we're going to go lower on that plank. So you're actually going to let your hips drop. There you go. She's going to worm or snake her way into that cobra. I guess it'd be snake because it's called a cobra. So we'll come down, lift up, hold, and then shift your hips back and up into the down dog. So those are the three movements we're going to go through, and then we're going to finish with a 60-second couch stretch on each leg. Okay, so you got to be – Patient, hang with me on this uh, mobility stuff. So we'll start out alternating Spider-Man step-ups. If you want to drive that elbow down towards the floor, the same arm as the leg that is forward, that's even better. So we're going to go here and remember, 45 seconds of each movement. So whenever you're ready to start, you can go ahead and get into it. My clock's going to run in three, two, one. Get it. job everybody good job bring that leg up and bring it out wide it always can we yeah, add there you go we always want it to come up out wide nice and wide outside that hand so you get that inner thigh stretch whole table smells like coffee now Glute bridge march. So we're going to flip over into that glute bridge march in about three. Oh, some of y'all already started. Good. So hips high, go. Hips up, alternating that march. It, folks you got about 15 seconds left on that one hold those hips up hold them up all right rest sorry I didn't meant to change my slide here now we're gonna go into our down dog to Cobra And three, two, one, let's go. Let's 
Just take your time, switch when you want to switch. This is our cool down. Just past halfway. Got it. Got it. All right, rest. So now we're going to go into a couch stretch. If you can put your back foot up on that box you were using, you can do that. If not, you're just going to get into a half kneeling position. You could always try to pull your foot up behind you, but we're going to get into that half kneeling stance and you're going to squeeze the cheek on the back leg. So Stephanie's going to put hers up on the box, then just come as upright as she's able to. She's not pushing that too hard. And we're going to hold 60 seconds on this side. Remember, it is important to squeeze the cheek on the back or contract your glutes on the back side. Already about 20 seconds in. Keep holding halfway. We're gonna need a full minute and then a full minute on the other side. All right, let's go ahead and switch legs. And get right at a minute on this side too. And this is our last, or also, and this is our last movement today. see those bikes over there in the background on the screen those do go outside with the barbells and the training we got planned for you outside as long as it's not raining today we'll have that stuff back out 8 30 to 12 30 and then 5 30 to about 6 6 45 depending on what time nick and jay are done coaching we go about 15 seconds about eight 10 seconds longer on this side All right, everybody, that is 